Entitled mother demands she uses my washroom. But you don't understand. We live in an apartment. She has no rights to my washroom. That's not the only thing she has her eyes on. I saw her talking to my husband. So, I'm a 26-year-old female. My upstairs neighbor, 21 female, is horrible. She's been harassing us, mostly aimed at me, for months. But I'm just going to go over to the major entitled mother part of it. For background, she constantly calls herself a MILF on her social medias, posts soft porn on her Facebook, <laughs> and so on. She's one of those moms who post about being a mom, but not necessarily her kid himself. Always either MILF-related or self-praise for being a single mother. But again, the child is almost never actually mentioned except as a prop. We were out of town when she moved in, and we later found out while we were out of town, she broke up with her boyfriend, who lived for all of two weeks with her, and was on the lookout for her new baby daddy. Well, when we got back to town, she came down and knocked on our door, not two minutes after we walked in. She somehow did not see me walk in, but while my husband, 28 male, entered the door and stepped outside, I got the dog settled. Leashes off, fresh water, etc. There was no introduction of names. She just came down with her baby on her hip, trying to tell my husband her lease says there's a shared washer and dryer in the house, and she just wondered where it was, and a few other things she claimed were shared, but we flat out owned it. He nicely tells her there's no shared laundry and the rest of the stuff in the house and excused himself back inside. Talked to her for, I don't know, maybe four minutes. We were in a hurry to leave again, so it was both that he did not want to talk to her and we genuinely only had five minutes to be home. We both found it odd and that it seemed she was trying to hit on my husband. Nothing that was a big deal on her wanting my husband in, but it freaked me out a bit with the laundry, since the only way she'd know about the laundry room was if she was looking in my windows. I'd bought my washer and dryer a year after moving in, and my landlord did not even know I had one, and I was mortified when I later informed them she claimed they were giving her use in her lease of it. I only mentioned this to landlord after she made such a big deal. I tried to tell myself it wasn't a big deal, even if she didn't have the use of the yard. She still might have wanted to see the whole house outside and just a glimpse in my window. While she was flat out peeking in the window, and I later found out she tried to break in. An unknown amount of times while we were out of town, both before and after talking to her. I have a video of the first time she noticed our camera on the door and she was mid-crap talking. Hilarious. Months go by and we'd gone out of state and had a rental car. We parked it in the road for 15 minutes. She watched us out the window the entire time. She ended up calling 911, saying she was being assaulted. She started her call and crying before she even came downstairs, claiming we were taking up all the parking. When both her parking spots were just wide open, oh, and one little fact she has, no vehicles. When the police show up, we were inside our house waiting by the door. Rental car still in the street. She had her dad come and block in our new normal vehicle in its normal spot and they're both just screaming outside. Her baby threw up on her bedding so her dad needed to come pick her up to wash them. And upon seeing the rental car in the road, blocked us in. She then started screaming how unfair it was that she quote, doesn't have a washer and dryer like him. And thus, it was all our fault, mostly. Then she tried telling the police, quote, She's a prostitute. He buys her once a week. She doesn't even live here. She's never here. She's just his stupid ducking girl. Just a side piece. She's not even on the least, and she's a freaking nut. And then, like, I have no idea why someone would keep saying prostitute that I'm being bought versus just calling me another name. But she never called me that, just everything else she could think of. She continued to call me my husband's little side piece and stupid witch for months, both loudly on the phone outside of our windows and online. She never mentioned who was his real girl, laugh out loud. I assume she thought this would cause a little bit of 
issues or tension between me and my husband, and I just laughed out loud because it didn't. While she was calling me a prostitute, my husband told her, Oh, she's my wife. What's wrong with you? Several times. Which meant she just doubled down the screaming that I was a prostitute. The cops hate them and just told us to avoid them until they move out since their family's well known and very disliked. This resulted in us looking out of our window and running to it and from the cars as we were legit scared of them. We had no idea what would happen next. This started daily harassment, normal bad neighbor stuff, crappy parking, blocking us in, excessive stomping. She broke our window that's under her stairs from stomping on them so hard. Dropping and thudding when we had never heard a thing before. This is still ongoing. She's admitted to doing it on purpose. She would even borrow a speaker from this guy to blast music inside or directly out of her window if we were outside. She admitted it to him and he stopped letting her use it. Laugh out loud. My cool neighbor got a new job and turns out they work with a radio dude. And he has told her EM hates us. But everything she says about us is clearly a lie and he thus has stopped hanging out with her. So... Since then, she has been fully evicted through the courts for non-payment. She herself said she never paid rent the entire time she lived there. Her reasoning was she was the second signer, not the co-signer, so her ex, who only lived there for two weeks, would be the only one who could be held accountable for the debt. Ironically, I do know the entire time she ran around screaming, I pay my rent, I should get XYZ. She was not, in fact, paying it. E.M., entitled Mother, spun such a story of how hard it is for her being a single parent to her baby. And they let her stay, and it's been two months since she was evicted. Of course, she also has been spending all sorts of bullcrap of us just doing stuff to her, with no proof or nothing. I don't know what she said to our landlord, but I do know it's not good. Three weeks ago, she came down and started talking to my husband while he was burning yard waste. Meaning, he can't just walk away. She was apologizing for the quote, one time she called the cops. Uh, she called them 30 times on us in four hours, claiming we were blasting music and it wasn't even us playing it. Or at our house at all. But she means when she called 911. She said a lot of bullcrap and my husband had a very non-committal talk with her. He ended up telling her, Hey, look, you mind your business and we mind ours. You can use the yard all you want. We don't care. But my wife is not going to want to talk to you. So please, just leave her alone. Oh yeah, and me too. The yard's big enough you can do whatever without being right next to us. She was on her way upstairs when I came home and we said hi. She's saying it's the most valley girl way possible, and that was that. I'll also say, I had sunglasses on, but I'm sure I did not have the most enthusiastic face since my husband was texting me updates the whole time, so I already knew that she was been saying stuff. A few hours later, she came down and comes right up to me. In my head, I was just thinking, oh, duck, no. I tried all the leave me the duck alone body languages and she did not seem to care. She starts telling me how she talked with my husband and she just wanted to say sorry to me in person. She then went on to say, woman to woman, I was told it was a single man who lived below me. I had no idea you existed. I'm a single mom, so I have to do what I have to do. And that's when I stopped her. I looked her in the face and said, thank you for your apology, it's accepted, but as nicely as possible, I'm not as nice as my husband. I won't sit here and listen to your lies. I don't want to talk to you. Thank you again for the apology. Well, the conversation went something like this. It's not a lie. I have the text. Do you want to see? <sighs> Raised my eyebrow and took a drink from my beer. No, I know this is a lie. It's a small town and my landlord was literally at our wedding. He's known my husband since he was two. He's known both of our parents for decades. Long story short, he knows us and our entire family very well. As we know his. Never mind when she moved in, she had a boyfriend. So what she quote heard, it was a single dude downstairs and said quote, Hey, 
I've never met him, but I'd duck him if he paid my bills. But she called me the prostitute. Yeah. <laughs> Even if he was single, why the duck would that automatically mean I'm a prostitute? And why want to get with a man you know to buy them if that's what you want out of a man? I just wanted to be nice, be a good neighbor, and this could all blow over. I already called the landlord and told him everything was fine, and we all agreed we could be friends now. I'm really sorry about what I said. Uh, no, what exactly did you say that you said sorry about? Calling me a prostitute or lying that I snort drugs to the police? When you call 911 or all the other times, I'm curious. Use the yard, but I'm not going to listen to this. My husband already told you to leave me the F alone. I don't want to talk to you, and I don't want to be your friend. This was when she got super defensive. She had been getting more annoyed every time I cut her off or did not listen to her crap. Also, I normally don't cut people off, but I both knew she would not stop talking, and I could not listen to someone excuse their harassment by telling me she wanted to get with and use my husband. Somehow, I was very calm. That's scary, I'm mad, but I'm smiling kind of mad. So, I know I had a crap-eating grin, but I was having a heart attack on the inside. Ugh, good. I don't need friends. You can see I have friends over every day. I don't need any more friends. I don't want to be friends with you either. I never did. Uh, cool. Shrugged off and went inside to get a beer. EM still screaming outside, stomping around for a while, then storms upstairs to just complain about me on the phone. Again screaming for a while, staring down at us from her porch the entire time. She started screaming at me when I peeked around the corner to see if she was staring at us. <laughs> Obviously she was. She then came downstairs again like an hour later, making a video on the backyard, just annoying, saying that we removed our own property. Horseshoe pit, patio set grill, and later the fire pit from the backyard because she can't use them now. Claiming she's going to get my vehicles towed and just being obnoxious and loud. I was inside when she came down, but I just went and sat in the same spot that I've been when I came back out. I'd just gone in for two minutes, so she likely saw me go in. She, still loudly talking on the speakerphone, came and stood two feet from me. The fire pit was in front of me, so she had to stand off to the side. She started walking in circles, trying to get into my view. I started moving my head, looking up and down in all sorts of directions, because she started fast walking to keep up. I had headphones in, full blast, and knowing she was looking at my screen, made sure it was on full blast. She eventually did a massive huff and stormed off. Met my cool neighbor at the end of the driveway where she started screaming about us. Cool neighbor told her to stop starting crap. An entitled mother stormed off, slamming her door several times when she got upstairs so we all knew she was mad. Now, one of the things she told my husband earlier was, quote, Sorry, I just found out yesterday the laundry room isn't shared. I had no idea until then. She had been told several times, so many times in fact, a week or more prior to this management, had to go over to her apartment and make her sign a paper for the second time, saying she has no use of the washer and dryer and needs to stop telling people other stuff to do. No one is locking her out from a shared room, we're locking her out from a private room, and she's telling people we're locking her out. The best part about this entitled mother... She demands everything be shared. The most recent thing she wants is our front porch. Even though she has a porch of her own. All because she's a parent and has a toddler. She may be the mother of a toddler, but she is not a parent. I know the father has no custody, so I believe she has full custody. But her parents have the kid all week, except maybe eight hours one day a week. The grandparents live like three minutes away. She parties every single day at home. Like, beer spilling out of your car door at 2 a.m. kind of party? Yeah, messy. She stated her parents watch her child and he has his own room there. 
not at her apartment. The child is also always dropped off to her just prior to any management slash handyman visits, only for the child to be picked up within five minutes of the worker leaving. My neighbors have seen slash heard her abusing the child outside before as well. Found out she's been telling landlord we're mean to her and her toddler, and she works 10 hours a day so her life is just so hard and all she needs is some help. She hasn't worked in over two weeks, and based off the doorbell videos I have, she got fired for being late too many times to count. Why is she late? She has people over doing drugs and drinking until midnight daily if not later. Like clockwork, she could have failed a drug test too though. She also orders DoorDash, not very common in our area, or some sort of delivery on average once a day, and will spend her entire paycheck on marijuana. Yeah. Straight deliver to her room from a dispensary, 200 to 300 bucks, plus an extra 50 for delivery. I honestly just can't believe she tried to use wanting to get with my husband as an excuse for calling me all that. Even if I wasn't his wife and he had been just some single dude, was she just trying to scare off girlfriends? She claimed she did not know I've lived there or was his wife until like three weeks ago, which is a massive lie. I know three people besides my husband and I who told her I'm his wife, and she's followed me around outside enough to know that I live there. She also kept claiming I wasn't on the lease, like she would know or it was her business anyways. But by the way, I am on it. I also wear three wedding rings. They aren't large or flashy, but are definitely noticeable from distances we've been. I did feel in my gut from the start she would be an issue, but I never thought it would be this bad. And I thought it would be over like the lawn or parking spots. She wants those too, but that's a different matter. Not her wanting my husband in laundry room like WTF, man. So people laughed at me when I said, I think she tried to break into our house for my laundry room. Of course, everyone knows now. I was totally right, but what the heck? Who does that? Obviously, way more to this horrible issue, but this is just a small slice of the pie. Landlord's claiming to be moving her out, but has not yet. We've not been home in over a month due to her and the safety issue she is. We're at the point of contacting a lawyer and are trying to find other places to move to. Unfortunately, moving before the lease is up is impossible, besides a miracle, but I'll have to go home eventually, and I have no doubt she'll get physical this time, since I've had to call CPS over her being a blackout drunk, alone with her almost two-year-old. I've not been able to make regular posts in the past 40 days, due to no internet slash service, but now, if you read my history, it's all that and worse. Police have been to my house at least three times in the past month, all called by random people. So, I found a comment that came from the original post, and OP replied to it. Here it is. Document absolutely everything. Start hitting the record button the minute she starts trying to engage with you. Dates, times, audios, videos, and send it to your landlord the cops, and CPS on a daily basis. The kids need to be taken away, and she needs to be in a psych ward. Here's where OP replies. Yeah, I've been downloading all of our doorbell cam videos to my Google Photos. The police were there again today. She did not have the child, but I messaged the landlord about it. Don't worry, we're getting to the bottom of this. That seems promising, guys, but let me know what you would do if you were stuck in this sticky position that OP is in. Let me know in the comment section as we turn to our second and final story of the day, another entitlement story. Entitled Mom wants me to return home to take care of her. Guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, just know there's three Mr. Redito channels that all have daily videos and do different things just a little bit. This story is animated, the next story is Mr. Redito stories, and the last channel is Mr. Redito office drama. You can find all the links in the description below. Let's hop into the second entitlement story. So, this is a really heavy topic. So, for reader's sake, I'll include a trigger warning for medical issues including cancer, self-harm, suicidal thoughts, and varying kinds of abuse. Disclaimer. 
This just happened and I'm not sure where to post this or put this due to my rules and restrictions. I apologize if I break any of them, but I need to talk about this. To begin with, I was adopted as an infant. My birth mother was a good person and got into a lot of legal troubles. So my current mother adopted me out of what I assumed to be bipolar episode of her wanting children. My mother is mentally ill, suffering from depression and bipolar disorder, but has not been medicated for it since 2008. She also hasn't been to a therapist for any of her issues since the 80s, according to her. I'm a troubled child, I'll admit. I struggled with many things during my childhood. I used to bully people on the playground. I'd hit people. I'd be disruptive. And when I went home, she'd have an episode in response to my misbehavior. Smack me. Spank me. Pull my hair and force me to sit in a corner for hours on end with no dinner some nights. Both her and I outgrew this eventually. She got too old to try and strike me since she's currently 70. And I, female turned male and currently 20, became introverted at school and stopped interacting with people. I'd say I was around 13 or 14 years old when this happened and my mental health was slowly tanking because of mine, at the time, undiagnosed gender dysphoria. She would constantly scream at me to do better in school. She was convinced I was a gifted child like she's been back when she was in school, even though none of my benchmark tests ever reflected that. For years, all the way up until I graduated high school, she'd call me a disappointment and would shun me, sometimes even taking away my toys and electronics for years. She held on to my original 3DS for two and a half years because I got a three instead of a four in elementary school. I still don't understand that grading system, but four was the highest you could get in a class. My mother and I struggled to get along for years. I resented her too much to love her and it showed. She'd always scream at me and both her husband about it. My father was little to no help for me. He was miserable. He drank himself to sleep after work, and even after he retired, up until the day he died, I knew he was suicidal, but he couldn't bring himself to do anything about it. I was the same for the longest time. We were both scared, gaslit, and manipulated into believing that everything she had grievances against was our fault. Everything that went wrong in our house, everything that she did not like was our fault. It was even worse when I came out as trans, because at the time my mother was a turf who agreed with J.K. Rowling's scrappy opinions. She despised me for wanting to be a man. Originally, she blamed it on peer pressure, then she moved on to blaming the internet. And then she finally gaslighted me and subsequently forced me to be non-binary for a year until I was sure. Well, growing up in a conservative school district certainly did not help, my friends laughed at me, mocked me. It was that year I self-harmed and attempted to kill myself. When the police took me to the hospital, my mother insisted I was just seeking attention and needed to go to therapy, which is ironic, because I've been begging her to let me see a therapist for months. I finally get to see a therapist, but it turns out it was one that agreed with my mother and thought I was in the wrong for, quote, acting out and quite literally told me to go sniff lavender to solve all my problems. I told her just forget about it. Absolutely forget it. Forget the therapy. I just deal with things my own way. To my surprise, as she said, she had arranged to have me go to another therapist. To my displeasure, it was an adoption counselor who thought all my issues stemmed from being adopted. They're not. I haven't had an issue with being adopted. I've had an issue with the state letting me go home with a mentally unstable woman who has physically and verbally abused me for years. It was an endless cycle of verbal abuse that never really stopped. Not even when I moved out in September of 2020. I jumped ship so fast. I did not have enough money or a stable job to survive, but I simply did not care. I had to get out of there. And now we get around to what's happening now. The pandemic, well, it simply ruined me. I've never been more withdrawn from the world, and I'm still just as suicidal as I was in high school. 
and have been struggling to get out of bed and get a job. I've been unemployed for almost two years now. I've been living off of gratitude and kindness, and I feel absolutely horrible about it. I feel like I can't change, like nothing will change. And worst of all, even though my mother is now 20 miles away, she's still messaging me and trying to manipulate me to come home. My father, well, he just died a few months ago, presumably from unknown causes. The loss still hurts me, and I haven't been able to deal with it properly. Recently, my mother fell ill and hasn't been able to eat solid food. She's lost 28 pounds over the course of three weeks and has been slowly starving. I feel absolutely horrible about it. I don't like seeing her suffer, but the straw that broke the camel's back was when she got her diagnosis today. Esophageal cancer. And they'll have to stick a feeding tube in her. Before this, I've been driving her around to appointments since she could not drive, almost having an anxiety attack because, well, I was outside of my comfort zone and she was busy chastising me for not doing anything with my life in the passenger seat. I almost ran off the road twice. I couldn't focus. So today she gives me the bad news and I was afraid this was going to be the case. I told her I'd be willing to help the best as I could, but... With the help of my current partner, I finally started setting up some boundaries. She doesn't like this in the slightest and starts threatening to evict me from my partner's house if I don't move back in with her for two months. Also adding in a later message that she was entitled to my help because she raised me for 20 years and sacrificed everything to me. Huh, typical. Two months would be reasonable for a normal person, but when you can't get out of bed and want to put a bullet through your head almost every day, this was a nightmare. I'd be away from my partner and my only source of stability in my life right now for two whole months. I can't do that. He would have limited visits because my mother is still afraid of COVID. Rightfully so, given her age and asthma issue. And I would not be able to leave unless she wanted me to go shopping or do something. I couldn't. The demand sparked another anxiety attack and I melted down with my partner over Discord. He told me that enough was enough and that I needed her out of my life for good. Something I've been dreaming of for years. The only problem is that I'm still afraid of her. She still strikes the fear of God into me every time we have a confrontation or argument. And worst of all, I'd be abandoning her in a time of need. Especially since she has no one else to take care of her. I haven't yet sent her my quote breakup text because I feel genuinely horrible. I feel suicidal. I don't want to have to deal with this, but I know. She's manipulating me into coming back, chastising me for not putting her first and treating me like a servant. I don't know what to do. I don't even know if I'll be there tomorrow, or if I'll give in and just go back, or if I'll finally part ways with her and leave her to her own device. I've lived a short and troubled life. I wanted things to change. I wish she and I both changed, but I don't think she ever will. Not even after this. <sighs> to the people reading this, I'm sorry for leaving such a painful story. I have very few people to talk to and I'm afraid. I feel like I'm at crossroads that's threatening to tear me to shreds, all because she wants me back and I simply don't know what to do. Am I in the wrong? This comment got a lot of attention. Let's read it, then talk about it in the comment section. This woman's not your mother. She's just an abusive, mentally ill woman that adopted you and then used you as a scapegoat and punching bag as she saw fit. Seems to me that you do now what to do. Nothing. You've always given more of yourself than she ever will. You owe her nothing. Certainly not your life. She's lived hers how she wanted by abusing and controlling you and your father. Your life is yours now. Live it. Love it. Live it without her torturous weight around your neck. You've survived this long, you can do this. I believe in you. Guys, I think that was an amazing little bit of advice right there, and it instilled a lot of positivity. Let me know your thoughts, and if you had some advice to give to OP, what would you say? Guys, thank you so much for joining in on this video. Every single day you'll find me here on my three channels, 
I hope you join for some crazy dramatic stories.